What is up everyone? It is DJ Martini Midwest Reviews coming at you with another video for my channel today. I have a really good one in some headphones that I thought were of value again. I'm definitely going to bring them to you. They are the Philips SHD 8850s. They are home cinema RF style headphones so they do transmit. Uh, basically you have a transmitter and you have the headphones. Transmitter. Uh, bass transmit to the headphones and that's how you get a connection. So it's a little bit different than your normal Bluetooth uh, style headphones just because you have that base station that you don't have in normal Bluetooth headphones but they work really good and they really do offer you know almost zero latency so that's the reason why I kind of picked them up because I wanted to see if I could use them for DJing or you know watching TV without any uh, lip sync issues so these are definitely pretty good for that and so that's why I thought they were of value and I'm going to bring them to you today and give you a really good review over them. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you never tuned in to DJ Martini Midwest Reviews, just know that I love to do all kinds of item reviews, especially items you maybe don't see a lot of videos on. Those are definitely the ticket where I like to get that. I like to do all that research so you don't have to give it to you all as easy as possible. And then leave some links in case you're interested in some of the products that I review. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to all my subscribers. We're doing really good. Thank you for joining the Martini Nation. Let's continue to grow. And once again, thank you uh, so much for subscribing. So if this is helpful at all, please leave a like or subscribe. Um, get the notifications, all that good stuff. So you know when I put out my latest videos. All right, let's jump into these headphones. What's in the box real quick? I always start off with. And so here's the box. You know, it looks like a very nice box. You know, it looks good, looks premium, uh, nice. And I think these were probably released in a foreign market before they released in the United States. And that's why we're kind of getting a discount price on them because I know these were really expensive when they came out. And I want to say, I'm not totally 100% sure, but I want to say they were releasing for almost like $300. They were like $299, somewhere in there, but very, very expensive. And I'll be honest right now that I would never pay as soon as I grab these headphones. It just doesn't feel like a premium headphone that I would pay that much for. I'll just so. put that out there right now. But we're going to talk about how much I got them for. Say they're uh, home cinema, digital wireless. They do have um, great specs. Um, 20 hours of battery life, 98 uh, dB sound level there. They do work on up to 8 to 40,000 hertz, which is pretty crazy for a pair of headphones. Uh, usually your bass is going to be between, uh, they're usually around like, you know, 40 to 20,000 hertz, but these these can hit a pretty pretty big uh, hertz level, especially when they're wired. When it's wireless mode, it's 8 to 20 to 5 hertz, which is still pretty good, and, and so I do like that about that. It does work off a bunch of different RF channels. And like I said, that's usually a wireless signal that's working off. So it could work between basically like the 2.4, the 2.47, which is kind of your Bluetooth range, but it just, this is a little bit better than the Bluetooth. So it's similar, but it's a little bit different. The frequency range it works on, and it works on multiple different ones. So that's how it kind of gives you a really good signal and also prevents that latency. So like I said, here's the box right here. Pretty good. It does come with a few cables. It has 40, 40 millimeter drivers, 20 hours of playtime, like I said, and it does say high performance, high res audio. Here are the actual headphones right here. And you can see that they look very nice. They do have like a piano black look. They do, I will say they will scuff and scratch easily because these are still pretty new, uh, but they do look like they kind of have some scuffs and scratches already just from Hooking them up, all plastic, does have this hammock design it says that kind of stretches. And I thought that might be what turns them on and off, but it is not. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. They do have really nice velour headphone pads, uh, which are really nice. They're really soft and these are super light. They only weigh about nine ounces. So that's like less than a can of soda. So uh, definitely very, very light. They are comfortable, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. They do have very limited controls on here. You have your 3.5 millimeter jack here. You have a mute button, you have volume button, and that's it. This has the charge section for These you. Your charge light there, which I could not find for the longest time. 
um, but yeah that is your on and off charge light and then just something that you guys should know that there is like a little bit on this side I don't know if you can see it right there right here a little bit of gap and that is so you can get a fingernail in there and you could take by pulling nicely here so I don't rip this on here kind of grab this inset here and you can pull on here and that's where your batteries are and it does come with Phillips triple a rechargeable 1.2 volt 900 milliamp batteries so they are rechargeable and you can recharge them in the base and then I'm gonna, I'll show you a little bit more but here's the base and it does come with a plug here a little circle plug right here just your basic plug and then this is the base so this is your wireless transmitter basically and so you have to have this you plug it in and then you can plug it into your TV via an optical cable here they have optical there's your plug in right there they have your selector so you can select optical or you can use the 3.5 millimeter jack there and then this is a selector switch for a negative 8 db or a, at right at 0 db level so if you have it at zero you're gonna have a little bit more volume if you go to negative eight of course that's gonna take away a little bit and you're gonna have a little less volume for your top volume so if it's a little bit loud for you you can go down to the negative eight if you want a little bit more volume you want to go to that zero db that way you have its full volume capabilities so that's your selector switch so make sure you select what side it's pretty simple to use i do like that that if you're on this side you know you're on optical side if you're on that side you know that you're on 3.5 millimeter side and it says it on there as well so it, it'll very easy to set up and all that good stuff so then on the inside like i said this is all shiny black it does look pretty nice it's not huge it's super light too and it does have your little charge plugs right in there so very cool there also in the box you will get an optical cable nothing fancy but it is an optical cable and you will get the 3.5 millimeter jack and this this would I would say is on the cheaper side it's a pretty cheap cable it does say Phillips and all that good stuff it works just great and I would definitely say this is probably at least a three foot cable straight stereo the two bands on there it does say Phillips on it on the band so you know points there some quick instructions as well uh, it was packed nicely the headphones were in here all that good stuff so it does have quick instructions here and here it tells you how to hook up and everything so everything was pretty well and easy it's a quick five minute setup honestly you just you're gonna take this and if you're hooking it up to your TV you have a 3.5 millimeter jack you can hook that way or you can go from your optical output on your TV straight to this which most new TVs have that. even an older TV will probably have a 3.5 millimeter jack or an RCA jack so you can get an RCA to 3.5 millimeter jack and you can go to this so you should be covered for even old TVs or new TVs with this device and you can use this no problem. I also use this with home theater so if you have a receiver you just got to go RCA to 3.5 into this or if you have optical as well you can go into this and then you could go from your receiver to these headphones so either way you're kind of covered many ways to hook this up as long as you have a 3.5 millimeter jack RCA jack because uh, they definitely make cables that have both of those so no problem very many ways I, I could hook this up with my computer and I could just take a 3.5 from the headphone output into this and then I have wireless headphones coming from my laptop too uh, same way with a DJ controller you can go straight from your if you have a 3.5 millimeter jack straight from that into this with 3.5 and then you have a wireless set of headphones uh, which is kind of popular right now with the uh, AI 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 headphones came out coming out with that little box that's the receiver uh, or the transmitter and then your headphones are the receiver and you have wireless headphones to DJ with I've been looking into that for years but I haven't quite found a way to do that and there was a couple of ideas that popped up lately so I'm going to show you that that does work in probably a future video for DJing, but right now this is just concentrating on the review for these headphones. 
So, but those are, I'm just giving you a bunch of things that you could use these for. And so it does have a lot of things you can do. A little note that I wanted to bring up is that if you are having charging problems with these, it might be because you, when you took the batteries out, you did not put this uh, piece back on the plate. You didn't put it back on correctly. And so there might be a gap in between here and this piece right here. And so that will prevent the prongs from going in correctly to charge the headphones and I did run into this and I couldn't figure out why until I kind of was looking at them and I noticed there was a little bit of gap in there I had to uh, move this just a little bit so everything was fitting correctly and then it pushed down solid and now I don't have any charging issues so if you have some charging issues that could be an issue is you just didn't get the plate on correctly so once you put them in the once you put them in the base you'll notice that the light does turn green if the light stays solid you're perfectly charged if it starts flashing then your headphones need some charge it does take about six hours to charge so that's kind of on the long side so you definitely want to make sure that you if you're not using them just leave them on there and then they will charge up because if they are completely dead it will take about six hours six hours to charge those batteries so just something to keep in mind there. all right let's get into the specs a little bit on these and some of the things I just wanted to point out that I already have but just to run it down again for you it does take triple A batteries they are rechargeable they are the color black is like a piano black they do fingerprint and scuff up a little bit they are over the ear headphones and they actually fit really well on my ears and I have pretty big ears so that is a great uh, compliment that they do fit really good on my ears they're comfortable headphones are super light at around eight ounces so they're really light comfortable headphones they do have the velour pads is what they call them and like i said they are breathable feel really good on my head the only thing is like i said the clamp force on the headphones feel really light so i feel like if i was doing something crazy running around or something that they might feel like they could fly off my head but if you have a bigger head then you might be okay uh, they do have the optical input and a 3.5 millimeter jack, so really easy to connect them. They do have the uh, 5 volt DC uh, American outlet plug, so that is good because uh, I did read some of the reviews that they came with a forum plug, but if you get them now from um, eBay or something, you should be getting an American We're plug. We're really easy to set up. Uh, so that was really good as well. And they have low ohms. It says about 32 ohms. So they should be able to get powered by an Android or iOS device really easily. And you should have great volume. But unfortunately, I did notice that an Android device had less volume than my iOS, my Apple device. So I don't know what that is. It could be Kodaking or things like that. But I did notice that on an Android device, I had a little bit less volume than on my iOS or Apple device so something to put out there uh, running it on my DJ controller running it on my computer running it on my TV I noticed the same volume as an Apple device so we we're all good there and I didn't notice any input or volume lags with uh, wired connection via a uh, wireless connection so the volumes were still pretty equal and still sounded really good both ways they do have a Great. range of 30 meters that's about 98 feet and I did notice with that RF digital signal man it was fantastic I could roam around my whole house with no issues and I was actually very surprised how well they stayed connected uh, the latency is fantastic it's almost zero it is great um, the only time you'll probably notice lag is if you are a DJ and you have them hooked up to a DJ controller you press the button you hear the sound in the headphones but that's still probably a little bit delay crazy compared but, to a Bluetooth signal where I would press the button and there would almost be a beat a whole musical beat of delay uh, between the headphones and this so these could actually be used for DJing and decent mixing and things like that because the delay is almost zero and it's pretty impressive so if you're looking for some wireless DJ headphones this might be the way to go all right everyone let's talk about sound profile on the Philips SHD 8850s so the sound profile is definitely a little bit warm in my opinion it has a nice warm sound a little heavy on the bass I don't think it's quite bass head but very heavy on the bass in my opinion then you have your mid-range is kind of second and then your high and treble is a little bit higher than your mid-range so 
little bit uh, different profile when it comes to headphones, mid-range, a little bit lower than your highs, and then you have your bass frequencies, which are very, very good and pronounced. I actually did a lot of frequency tests uh, via like YouTube videos and things, and you could hear really low frequencies on this. And so I really believe that when it says eight uh, hertz all the way up to 22.5, definitely. Um, I could pick up low frequencies at 10 hertz, which is pretty crazy. On the high end, my hearing probably is a little bit damaged from being a DJ my whole life, but definitely have all the signal that you need. Uh, so pretty impressed with the low range on it. And like I said, then you have voice, which are there, but they do sound a little bit muted compared to the treble and the bass. So the home theater, listening to movies and listening to shows and things like that sound really, really good. The voices are clear and and good enough to hear but like i said low low end sounds and your higher end sounds are a little bit more pronounced than your mid-range but voices still sound pretty good so excellent for home theater music was okay like i said uh, music is when it comes to the voices maybe sound a little bit lower than some of the other sounds sound stage was still pretty good though you do hear a lot of sounds uh, panning sounds really good in these and and from side to side uh, any kind of stereo action in there sound really good listening to Dolby Atmos songs sounded really good as well so they do have a nice high fine sound it's not the craziest uh, I think it's only 16 bit it's like CD quality but um, they still sound pretty decent for saying they are high res so they do sound good for the price point. So let's go to positives and negatives and then we'll get you guys on out of here. But positives for sure is the price point that I will tell you that you can find these for around 50 to $79. On eBay, they have a lot of these out there and I picked mine up for around $50 and that is a value if you're picking these up at $50 because if you look for any other RF type headphones, they're usually between 79 and $90. So these are definitely a really good option for that. And like I said, I'm gonna do a couple other RF type headphones just to see if there's any big difference between them. But uh, these were pretty good. And for that value between 59 or even 50 to $79, a, a great headphone. And just for that RF technology and for the sound because they do have really uh, decent sound profile as well so that they're rechargeable that they have the 3.5 millimeter jack all those are positives in my book uh, really easy to use and set up that's definitely a positive in my book i love that they have that uh, 3.5 millimeter jack so you can use them as a normal pair of headphones as well you don't have to use them wirelessly with the bass but that's just another option uh, to use them with the bass and have that really awesome zero lag or very close to zero lag. Uh, so uh, definitely positives all the way around there. So like I said, I think the value that you can get them at now is an absolutely positive. It, it was, it's a good value. Uh, negatives, a couple things that I noticed negatives is the on and off auto power. Now, if you have the, now as a DJ, you move your headphones a lot. And so if you're using these for DJing, I notice they do have the left and the right on there, so you know that, but when you're wearing these, I thought that this might be the device that turns them on and off on your head, but it's actually tilting them back. When you tilt them back, they shut off. Uh, so I notice, so they're a little bit sensitive. They must have some kind of gyro or some kind of something that knows that when you tilt them, that they shut off automatically so I like to wear DJ headphones back a little bit <laughs> like this <laughs> and so when I tilt them back a little bit they will shut off and so that was kind of a negative for me I noticed you go all the way forward until you get to a certain point they will shut off uh, but usually they stay on a lot longer than if you go backwards if you go back on them they turn off immediately now as soon as you put them back on they turn back on. But you know, if you were moving around and I did notice, I did notice if you mess with them a little bit, they will shut off and then turn back on. So the auto power issue is a little bit of an issue if you're moving around. So if you were 
uh, DJing and you're kind of bobbing your head and doing some things like that, it is possible to shut them off and then they turn back on. So that's just something that was a negative for me. So that comes with that loose fitting on my head at least. You know, some people might not have any issues with that, but I did uh, if they're fitting a little loose. Uh, just overall build quality, they feel a little cheap. The plastic doesn't feel like a quality, thick, nice plastic. It feels a little cheap to me. So that's another negative for me. Six hours of charge time. It takes six hours to charge them. So if they're completely dead and you charge them, it takes six hours to completely charge them to full. And so that's a little bit of hesitant too. And then they are 16 bit, 44.1 kilohertz uh, CD quality sound. And that's a little bit older in my opinion for the price point of these. And these headphones came out in late 2019. So they definitely could have been made a little bit more quality uh, for sound because that's a little bit older in my opinion. So that could be a negative, but for the most part, they still sound good. So. But those are just a couple of little things that I noticed. With these headphones that were retailing, like I said, for around $200, or if not more. And now they're a value at, you know, 50 to 79, which I think what they should have came out in the first place. In between that price point, I would definitely pay that, but I would not pay, you know, over a hundred dollars honestly so if you're looking on amazon you might find these for that extreme price point around 200 some dollars i would not pay that go to ebay definitely check that out i will leave some links and they'll probably be amazon and ebay uh, so you can check them on out. amazon they might be a little bit more expensive and you could probably find them a little bit cheaper on ebay so just something to put out there in that 50 to 79 dollar price range i think that's a great value check them out i think some people aren't gonna like them as much as other people, just depending on what you're using them for though, is like a big thing. Cause like I said, if you're gonna use them with your TV and you don't mind having the base, uh, you don't mind things like that, you might appreciate them. They're light, they feel, like I said, really cheap. And so I think that might turn some people off on them is that they feel so cheap. They're like rattly. Um, they just, they feel and sound, um, you know, the way quality of the way they're made cheap but the actual sound coming out of the speakers in my opinion is pretty decent for that value of the 50 to 79 dollars it's not the value at a hundred dollars but it's the value of 50 to 79 dollars and so from a perspective of that is why i'm saying that these are a value right now especially since they're rf uh, they have that almost zero lag and uh, you can use these for DJing. I will approve that one. Uh, they sound pretty good. And the only issue that I had is with the auto off with the turning. Uh, or if they like shake and stuff, they might turn off and then turn on. Right Other than that, still a good value in my opinion for $50 to $79. I still think they can be a piece of equipment in your arsenal that you could definitely use. You can definitely still use them corded. Just plug them into any device and they sound pretty decent. Or you can use that RF technology around your house, walking around, uh -huh. plug it into any device, your TV, your laptop, and pretty decent quality sound. So thank you so much for tuning in. This has been DJ Martini Midwest Reviews. Please give me a like or subscribe if this is helpful at all. This has been the Philips Home Cinema Digital Wireless RF SHD 8850s and you can find them on eBay, on Amazon, at a good value between that $50 to $79. Definitely a good purchase price to me, to my opinion. At that price, you're getting a little more uh, higher than that, then maybe I would probably wait till they get a little bit cheaper, but you definitely can find them for that price now. So thank you so much for tuning in. It's been DJ Martini Midwest Reviews, and can't wait to see you on the next video. Plenty of more videos to come including with more uh, RF headphones, DJ controllers, speakers, all kinds of stuff. I got it coming to you this summer. A lot of great videos coming out. All right, we'll talk to you all later.